Hello, everyone, and welcome to our transfer admission session. Um, we'll just give people a couple more minutes to log in, and we'll begin our session in just a few short moments. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our transfer admissions um, session. Um, we greatly appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your busy schedules to come join us. My name is Nick Rosado. I'm one of the associate directors of undergraduate admissions at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, and I'm also the director of transfer admissions. I'm also joined today by Teresa Abbott, one of our associate directors uh, of undergraduate admissions who also works with transfer students. Um, she will be moderating the chat box and the questions. Um, so if you do have any questions throughout the session, please feel free to type them in the question box. We do receive those questions. They don't automatically appear in the chat box, but when we start to answer them, they will appear in the chat box and I'll either answer them over the audio broadcast or Teresa will type some answers into the chat box um, as well. Um, as much as we can, we'd like to keep this an interactive session. So if you do have questions at any point, like I said, please feel free um, to type those um, into um, the chat box. Um, obviously, we'd prefer to meet with you in person on our campus in Troy, New York. Uh, but during these times, um, I think this is a great option to kind of connect with everyone who does have questions about uh, transfer admissions. This session is intended um, for anyone with an interest in transfer admissions. Um, so some of us joining today um, are just thinking about applying maybe in future semesters for transfer admissions. Um, some of you have already been applied and accepted. Um, some of you have already been implied, accepted, and have decided to attend um, Rensselaer. Um, so we will be covering a wide range of topics and we will get to all the questions and all the topics um, that we need to um, go over. Uh, but just keep in mind there is a diverse audience. Um, so something that might not apply to you, uh, may apply to those other folks um, who are, are attending um, the session. Um, even if you have really dis discovered RPI already, I um, always like to start a little bit about kind of where we come from and what direction we're headed. Um, so Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute was founded back in 1824 by Stephen Van Rensselaer, and he was really trying to bring science to the common purposes um, of life. At that time, education was really limited to the elite class, um, to those rich um, kind of folks um, in the United States in, in particular. So he was really attempting to bring science to the common man, to the farmers um, of that time. Um, obviously, a lot has changed um, over um, the last uh, close to 200 years since the founding um, of our university. Um, the technology, obviously, that we're working on in 1824 is very different than the technology we're working on the year 2020 um, that we're currently in. So really our next step in our journey is what our current president, Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson, has coined the new polytechnic. Dr. Jackson herself is a world-renowned physicist, first African-American female to receive her PhD from MIT, um, sits on uh, boards of directors of companies and organizations like Federal Express, the New York Stock Exchange, um, has been an advisor to President Obama um, on several key areas of science and, and education. Um, but for a long time, technological universities kind of sat in their bubbles, doing their own research, um, kind of working on their own things. Um, so she really wanted to bring technological universities to the forefront and really expand our reach to work with local governments, to work with businesses, um, to work with people throughout the world. So really three key components of this new polytechnic are intellectual agility, multicultural sophistication, and a global view. Um, intellectual agility, um, if you're entering as a transfer student um, coming up uh, for the fall 2020, you'll be, a lot of you will be entering your junior year. Uh, by the time you graduate in just two short years or three short years, um, the world will be a very different um, place. Technology will be very different. Companies will be very different. Um, just think about all the new inventions that technological um, innovation has occurred over the last um, two to three years. So at RPI, we really want to uh, instill um, those baseline functions, those baseline skills um, in your particular majors. So you can take those into any industry, into any technology, into a business, into a company, into a technology that doesn't exist today, um, but you'll still have that solid foundation um, in your areas to be agile um, with, your, with the intellectual skills um, that come naturally to you and also the intellectual skills that RPI um, has taught you. 
Um, when I think of intellectual agility, um, a couple of our students um, at RPI who worked in our office, um, they were chemistry majors um, and they ended up getting hired um, by a chip fad manufacturing company. Um, there's no chemistry in what their job um, will entail, uh, but the chip uh, manufacturing company um, really, really uh, valued um, the skills that the RPI um, education and taught those individuals so they could really learn the new um, job, learn, learn the industry and apply that um, intellectual ability um, to their particular um, job that they had um, going forward. Multicultural sophistication or global view go hand in hand. Obviously, our world is becoming a smaller and smaller place um, by the day and by the minute. So we really want students to be um, uh, used to, um, uh, introduced to um, people from different backgrounds from around the world. Um, so our campus itself um, has students from all 50 states, over 60 countries um, enrolled at, at RPI. So you're gonna get to meet people with different backgrounds, different beliefs coming from all over the United States and all over the world. Um, so when you do enter and work for a company, um, you might be working with someone who's across the hall from you, but you also might be working with someone who's across the world um, from you at that point. So just being exposed to different people during your time at Rensselaer um, really helps you set you up for success um, as you enter the workforce or graduate school or medical school or whatever your next step um, in your life might be. As I said before, uh, it'd be great if you come, could come to our campus. It is really a beautiful campus located on a hillside in Troy, New York. Um, if you're from outside the area and have never been um, to Troy, New York, um, Troy, New York is located right across the Hudson River from Albany, New York, the state capital. Um, Albany, Schenectady, and Troy kind of make up the three largest cities within the capital district. Um, Troy is a lively city that has gone, undergone a great uh, renaissance or reinvention of itself over the last decade. Um, during that time, over 150 new restaurants and shops have opened up in our downtown area. Um, as I said, our campus is located on a hill overlooking downtown Troy. Um, so everything um, down the hill um, is downtown Troy and that leads right into um, the Hudson River. Um, so there's lots of great festivals throughout the year, Rocking on the River, Troy Pig Out, um, Chili Cook-Offs. Um, as you can see from the pictures, um, there's a large farmer's market um, that happens um, every Saturday. Um, during the nice weather months, it's held outside. Um, food trucks um, pull up, um, different food vendors are there. So there's really a great um, relationship between our, our Troy students, uh, between the Troy community um, and our students at Rensselaer. Uh, many Rensselaer students um, live in downtown. There's a residence hall located in downtown Troy. Um, some of our fraternities are located in downtown Troy, which so is a really lively, vibrant area to take advantage of. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Albany, New York, the state capital is 10 minutes down the road. Um, there's a large arena, the Times Union Center, where all the large concerts come through. If you have any political aspirations, uh, there, we've had students who have done internships with the state senate, the attorney general's office. Um, so there's lots of great opportunities to get involved um, in the local community. Um, even if you've never been to our campus before, you've probably interacted with some of the companies, organizations, products um, that our alums have invented over the years. So everything from the Ferris wheel, um, George, George Ferris, an RPI graduate, um, invented the Ferris wheel. Um, I know it's kind of small on your screen, um, but the picture um, of the stadiums, um, that's actually Fenway Park where the Boston um, Red Sox um, play. Um, the Osborne Construction Company was a construction company, father and son team, both uh, RPI graduates. Um, who not only designed and built Fenway Park, but also the old Yankee Stadium, the old Tiger Stadiums. They were really at the forefront of stadium construction in the early um, 1900s. Um, the Apple uh, store is pictured up there. Peter Bolin, one of our architecture graduates, um, designed um, some of the more unique um, Apple sto stores um, around the United States and around the world. Uh, the boys getting sunscreen there because sunscreen was invented by an RPI um, graduate. We've had lots of great connections with NASA and the space program. Um, George Lowe was an RPI graduate, later became one of RPI's presidents. In the interim, he worked for NASA and led many of the Apollo and Gemini space missions. Um, so a lot of great um, information and sharing between NASA and RPI. Uh, many students will do internships, get hired by NASA to work um, even to this um, current day. As recently as about a year and a half, two years ago, one of our graduates, uh, Reed Weissman, was stationed on the International Space Station. The at sign is pictured on the slide because the father of email, uh, Ray Tomlinson, is an RPI graduate. He was developing electronic communication for the company that he worked for, and he's the one who decided to put the at sign on everyone's email address. So next time when you type at Yahoo or at Gmail or whatever your email client might be, um, you can think of RPI um, fondly in that um, development. 
Um, overall, we just have about 6,500 undergraduates on our campus in Troy, New York. In addition to those undergraduate students, we also have about 1,000 um, graduate students. So we are primarily an undergraduate institution, and that's what our focus is on um, in educating our students on our campus. Um, those 6,500 students are divided between our five schools, which you see pictured on the slide, um, architecture, science, the Lally School of Management, which is our business school, the School of Engineering, and the School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences. Although we do have these five distinct schools, we like to say that they're very interconnected um, and that there's low walls between our five schools. And that goes everything from up our faculty and professors um, to our students and staff on our campus. Um, so we have faculty and staff who might be assigned to the biology department, um, but they're also working with professors in engineering on research or the humanities, arts, and social sciences on research. We have lots of students who have dual majors or majors and minors or even sometimes multiple minors. It's not uncommon for a mechanical engineering student to have a minor in psychology or an architecture student to have a minor in music or a business student um, to have a second major in biology. We really encourage students to explore their academic interests, um, no matter what uh, school those classes might be held in. Um, there are very, uh, very few limitations on what classes students can take. So if you are an engineering student, you can take business classes. If you're a psychology student, um, you can take uh, biology courses. Um, so we really do, um, we really do uh, take that into consideration, really allow students um, to kind of have um, their academic interests in mind and kind of take the courses that most um, interest them. I'm going to briefly go through each of our five schools and just provide you with a little uh, background on what programs that they do have to offer. Uh, but there are some components that really do touch upon um, each of our academic academic majors um, on campus. So all of our uh, all of our majors, regardless of what you're majoring in, we want students to kind of have a core set of skills. Um, one of those skills is communication. Um, so for a de over a decade now, um, we've had a communication intensive requirement for all of our students. So we want students, no matter what major you are, to be able to read, write, communicate with others. Um, even if you're going into the STEM fields, you're going to need to write grant proposals, you're going to need to communicate um, with people at the company that you're working for, or um, if you're looking for funding, your, your funding proposals. Um, so all students have to take at least two courses that are deemed communication intensive. One will be a traditional English course, um, and the other one will be a course that's directly applied towards your major. Um, so it might be more technical writing or research writing or business writing, uh, but you will leave Rensselaer with a solid uh, foundation in uh, communication skills. Over the last several years, we received more and more feedback from companies and graduate schools that data, um, communi data communication was really becoming a key uh, to, to uh, recent graduates being successful um, in their first jobs or in their graduate schools. Um, so we we're one of the first schools to have a data intensive requirement. Just like the communication intensive requirement, one of those courses will be a general data course and the other course will be a course that's more specific to your intended major. Um, the kind of idea of big data is a big research um, component on our campus um, at Rensselaer. Um, so we have professors and faculty looking at big data and how it can kind of improve our world around us. So everything from the Jefferson Project, um, which is a project taking place um, or headquartered in Lake George, New York, which is a resort lake located in the Adirondack Mountains, about 45 minutes north of our campus in Troy, New York. Um, the Jefferson Project focuses um, on Lake George and making Lake George even healthier lake than it is um, at this time. Lake George is not only a great place um, to vacation, so there's lots of boating and swimming activities that take place during the summer months, but it's also um, the largest uh, drinking water source or reservoir um, for the folks who live up in the Adirondack Mountains. Over the last several decades, there's been a lot of changes to the ecosystem um, of Lake George. Um, there's been invasive species like zebra mussels that have come over from Asia and taken over um, a large portions of the lake. Um, there's been a lot of studies done on how the rock salt that's applied to roads to melt the ice um, during the winter months is kind of washing into Lake George and changing the salinity and changing the ecosystem that, that survives in Lake George. Um, so our scientists and researchers have installed um, research units throughout the lake um, that collect data. Um, our students have built robots that go into the lake that collect data, um, everything from water temperature to water salinity um, uh, to, to, to everything that you can kind of think of. So taking these kind of millions of data points and analyzing it and hopefully one day coming up with a solution of how to make uh, not only Lake George, but the lakes throughout New York State, the lakes throughout the United States, and the lakes throughout the world even more healthier than they are um, at this time. 
Another project um, that our faculty are working on focuses on data from emergency rooms. Um, so they're analyzing data um, from everything from what time did a person uh, arrive at the emergency room? If you arrived at two in the morning versus two in the afternoon, did you receive a different level of care? Um, if you're coming from a different socioeconomic background, did you receive a different um, amount of care? Are you arriving at the beginning of a shift change or the end of a shift change? Did you receive a different amount of care? So again, analyzing these millions of data points and kind of digesting that in a way that hospital administrators, doctors, and nurses um, can make sure that everyone is receiving the best care that they can and also equitable care when they enter um, in a serious situation um, in the emergency room. We also really do try to support our students both in and out of the classroom. So our Advising and Learning Assistance Center provides free tutoring for any of our students. So if you're struggling in a particular course, you can go to their office and they already have uh, designed study sessions for many of the courses that we offer on campus. But if you are struggling in a course, they'll set you up with a graduate student who they employ in their office for that little extra, uh, for that little extra study support. Um, so we really want to support you both in and out of the classroom. We're really big at uh, developing student leaders um, and leaders after you leave RPI. Um, that's one of the things that RPI graduates are known for, are being leaders, um, being able to hit the ground running fastly for the companies or graduate schools that you're um, entering. If you look at CEOs, vice presidents of technology companies, architecture firms, businesses throughout the United States and, and throughout the world, there's a disproportionate number of those um, who are, are RPI graduates, just because we not only teach you the kind of hard skills, but we also focus on teaching you some of those um, soft leaders skills um, and communication skills as well. So we have a whole center dedicated um, to student leadership. Um, they're ingrained in several of our courses on campus. So you might be taught by an engineering faculty member and also an Archer Center for Student Leadership faculty member. Most of our classes on our campus have collaborative learning built into them. Um, you'll see, um, or if, when you get to come to campus, that students really work together, um, pulling the rope together. Although everyone on our campus is smart and is trying to do the best they can, they realize that they're going to need to work together to get through the courses. So every course, whether um, it's a small group work project or a longer semester long group work project, um, we'll team students up together to kind of work on these problems um, uh, throughout the semester and real world learning opportunities. So the Archer Center fac faculty really helps students work on those group dynamics, work on you that sometimes you need to be a leader, sometimes you need to be an active contributor. But if you are having difficulty in those group dynamics, you can go to their center and get that little extra help. Um, our faculty are top notch. Um, we have a great student to faculty ratio, about 13 to one. Um, and all of our courses are taught by faculty members. Um, none of your courses will be taught by graduate students or TAs. Um, there might be graduate students or teaching assistants in place to help with laboratory skills or other kind of study sessions. Um, but it's really about um, having the interaction um, with our faculty um, in their research uh, laboratories. Most of our faculty are tenure track faculty. So in addition to teaching, um, they're also um, doing research. So as I said, we're briefly going to talk about each of our five schools. And when we talk about, when I talk about the schools, I'll also touch upon uh, kind of a component of that school um, that has a large percentage of the student population participating in. So for instance, the School of Architecture, I'm going to talk about our study abroad programs, just because 65 to 75 percent of our School of Architecture students participate in study abroad programs. It doesn't mean that only School of Architecture students can participate in study abroad. Um, we're just kind of breaking it up and highlighting throughout the five different schools. So our School of Architecture has two degree programs, a five-year Bachelor of Architecture degree program. That's the degree program that you want to get into um, if you want to become a licensed practicing architect. We also have a four-year um, building science program for those who want to work in building conservation or kind of study um, how buildings are kind of living, breathing organisms within the world um, that we live in. So the School of Architecture really does work at combining artistry and technological aspects um, of the discipline. Um, so the School of Architecture has some great facilities um, on its campus, um, on our campus here at RPI, um, and really has some great um, study abroad um, opportunities. As I mentioned before, about 65 to 75% of our School of Architecture students do participate in study abroad. Um, it's less popular um, for students in our, our, our four other schools, 
but it's certainly readily available. Um, we've spent a lot of time developing our study abroad um, programs so that when you do have that study abroad experience, you're not only getting that kind of cultural diversity and international experience, but you're also experiencing academic diversity. So when students are studying abroad, they're going during their junior or senior year. And we not only want you to get that cultural diversity, but we also want you to take courses that will directly count towards your major degree requirements. So if you are a biology student, taking courses in biology um, in Japan. If you are an engineering student, taking junior, senior level um, engineering courses um, in Denmark or in Singapore. Um, so we want you to see how engineering might be taught differently in South Africa than it is taught differently um, in the United States. So the problems that students in South Africa are looking at are different than the problems that they are here um, in the United States. Um, so each of our five schools has relationships with universities throughout the world where you can study for a semester or even summertime um, opportunity to kind of get that cultural diversity and academic diversity um, experience. We're also part of a larger program called Global E3, um, which is a grouping of about 80 to 90 different technological universities throughout the world, um, where you can also spend um, a semester. If we don't have an agreement at the time with a current university, you can also work with our study abroad office on setting up that agreement and kind of getting those courses pre-approved to make sure um, that they will transfer back into your intended major degree so you can still stay on track um, to graduate. Uh, because of our size, about 6,500 students, You'll get to know your academic advisor. You'll get to interact with him or her. Um, so you can kind of come up with your own unique study plan to make sure that you're staying on track to graduate, even while you're ingraining the study abroad experience um, into your time and into your curriculum. Our School of Engineering is our largest school. Just over half of our students are enrolled in our School of Engineering. Um, we have 11 different majors, everything from the traditional mechanical, aeronautical, nuclear engineering majors, uh, chemical, civil. Um, so really the whole uh, run of uh, uh, programs that are available. Um, all of our programs are ABET accredited. Um, so that is really scrutinized by the ABET community to make sure that we're providing the best education um, that we can um, provide. We really do try to focus on providing students with real world multidisciplinary um, learning opportunities. Um, so one of those, one of the main focuses um, of our School of Engineering is the OT Swanson Design Laboratory. And within this laboratory, as an engineering student, you'll be working with engineering students from different disciplines. Um, so if you're a chemical engineer, you might be working with mechanical engineers, material science engineers on different real world problems. So companies come to us and sponsor our research for our students to work on. It can be anything from companies like General Electric, GE. We've had a long standing relationship with their wind turbine division um, to work on those problems all the way to our local Center for Disabilities who came to us and said that many of their clients were having difficulties um, due to physical disabilities, keeping up with good oral hygiene because they physically couldn't hold a traditional toothbrush um, and brush our teeth. So a number of different student uh, groups worked together on that problem. One group developed a device that looks like a mouth guard that you might wear in football across hockey games. And the individual could slide that uh, mouth guard into their mouth and it's actually self brush that person's um, teeth. So they're continually working to improve that, continually trying to make uh, advances with that technology. Um, they're even uh, working with our school business students to make sure that that device they create is ac economically viable. Because obviously if this uh, self-brushing uh, mouth guard toothbrush was going to cost $30,000, not many folks could afford that um, to have that um, in their house on a daily basis to kind of use that um, to brush their teeth. But at the end of the semester, these students work together, uh, present their ideas to the vice presidents, to the CEOs of the companies that are sponsoring um, these design um, kind of competitions and projects. Um, so they really kind of experience what a real world working situation uh, might be. We also have the MIL, the Manufacturing Innovation Learning Laboratory, um, where you can learn to manufacture products. So students will design and, and invent products, and they will be able to manufacture them right on campus in short runs from 200 to 1,000 pieces. We have a wind tunnel on campus, a centrifuge, a linear accelerator. So whatever tools you might need um, to kind of uh, do research to set yourself apart from others, we will have those facilities available um, on our campus. Our School of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences is kind of our liberal arts wing within our technological university. So it offers traditional humanities and social science programs and things like music, philosophy, um, psychology. Um, but it also houses many of our interdisciplinary programs, things like game and simulation arts and sciences, which is a video game design program, communication, meeting, design, design, innovation, and society, which is a product design um, program. 
So although it does have these kind of traditional humanities and social science programs, there's also kind of technology underlaying many of the majors within that school. Uh, because of this, it provides a lot of great opportunities for students to have second majors, dual majors, and minors. Um, so as I mentioned before, we have lots of students who might be in our School of Engineering, but also have a minor or second major in music and philosophy. And that's certainly doable um, and kind of fitting those requirements right in um, to your general education requirements. Um, regardless of your major, we want you to have a kind of a well-rounded educational experience. So we do have a humanities, arts, and social science requirement. Generally, students are required to take at least 24 credits from our School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, at least 12 humanities credits, and at least 12 social science credits. As a transfer student, you might be bringing some of those courses in with you um, from community colleges or other four-year institutions that you've attended. And those English classes, those history classes can count towards your humanities and social science requirement. But you will need to take some humanities social science requirements, generally upper level courses, once you do arrive at Rensselaer. We really do allow students to pick the courses that most interest them. We're not going to say that you have to take two English courses, two of these courses, two of those courses. If you like psychology, um, your upper division courses can be in psychology. If you like music, philosophy, whatever your interest might be, we allow you to kind of take those courses and choose um, those areas um, of study. Because our School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences is not a typical School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, the career pathways for our Haas students are, are really tremendous. Um, so we have everything from uh, uh, students who are getting into TV and film, to video game design, to artificial intelligence, to animation studios. Um, so it's really a great opportunity if you're not thinking about primarily majoring in our School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences to kind of get exposed to some of those different areas um, that the, the, the Haas School um, does provide. The Lally School of Management is our business school on our campus. It's continually being ranked in the top 50 as far as undergraduate business programs um, are concerned. It has two degree programs, a general BS in business and management um, with seven different concentrations to choose from. And if you're interested in business, but also interested in kind of crunching numbers, you can also look into our business analytics um, major um, as well. Um, we are AACSB accredited um, and less than, I think it's less than five, 10 percent of business programs throughout the United States do have this um, accreditation. So it's really a great opportunity to kind of uh, study at a top notch business school with it still being on the smaller side um, of things. So we have, um, because of this kind of uh, success, 80% uh, of our students um, are employed at graduation from our business school, which is considerably higher than most business schools throughout the United States. And our average starting salary for those students is also considerably higher um, for students who are just um, leaving um, undergraduate education. And some great employers um, hire our Lally School um, graduates. One of the things that the Lally School does focus in on is entrepreneurship. Um, entrepreneurship is a, a kind of a focus throughout our university on our campus. We realize that students who are at a technological university often have great ideas for new products, new inventions, starting new companies. So we have a whole center dedicated to entrepreneurship and innovation called the Severino Center. Severino Center works with students on developing business plans. Um, they will hold elevator pitch competitions throughout the year. They bring investors to campus um, throughout the year so you can pitch your ideas to them. Sometimes these investors will invest in their student companies. Other times they'll provide feedback to the students on what they can kind of work on and what can they can kind of improve um, in their company or in their organization or in the product um, that they are developing. And these opportunities in entrepreneurship and innovation are open up to all of our students across campus. So you don't have to be enrolled in our business school to specifically get involved um, in entrepreneurship and innovation or the Severino Center in general. Our School of Science is our second largest school on campus. Um, it offers a number of different majors in the traditional biology, physics, chemistry setting. Um, also houses some interdisciplinary programs um, and things like biochemistry and biophysics, um, as well as it houses our computer science and mathematics um, department. One of the things that our School of Science really does focus on is providing students with research opportunities. And these research opportunities are not only available to School of Science students, but also to students um, across our disciplines um, at uh, Rensselaer. So on the slide, we have everything from the Darren Freshwater Institute, which I mentioned before, um, the Jefferson Project, that's where that research is located um, out of. Uh, we have an observatory um, on campus. Uh, we have a building called the Center for Biotechnology and Interdisciplinary Studies, 
which is a building solely dedicated to interdisciplinary research. Um, so there's faculty members from chemistry, biology, biomedical engineering, all working together on different um, research projects, everything from new drug inventions to Alzheimer's research, um, to even working on issues with our current COVID-19 um, situation. Our CCI, our Center for Computational Innovations, um, is a supercomputer. It's located in East Greenbush, New York, at our technology park about 10 minutes from our campus. It's continually being upgraded, um, so it's continually ranked in the top 10 as far as um, uh, university-based supercomputers are concerned. Um, as I mentioned, research is a core component of our research institution. Um, although it says more than 900 students participate in undergraduate research, that's probably actually on the low side of things. Um, those 900 students are the ones that actually kind of report to us. Um, a number of cases, students will just kind of informally approach their professor or advisor about working in their research laboratory, and they'll be invited um, to work in the research um, laboratory. These opportunities for transfer students begin immediately. So if you are interested in participating in research, reach out to your professors. There is an official um, research process run by our, our Office of Undergraduate Studies where you can apply for funding um, to work in a professor's research laboratory. But more times than not, professors have their own funding coming in. So you're able to work in their undergraduate research laboratories um, really right from day one or maybe after your first semester as a transfer student um, at Rensselaer. So as I said, there'll be official postings posted on campus, but more times than not, professors will just make announcements in their classes. Um, or we encourage students to be proactive. If you're interested in a particular area of research, um, email that professor who's working on that research project. They may not have an opening that semester, but they'll keep you in mind for the next opening that they do have. So our undergraduates are really participating in, in research opportunities that maybe at some other larger universities might be reserved for graduate or postdoctorate students. Because we're a top of the ranked national research university, we have lots of research funding and lots of research taking place on our campus. Uh, but because we're a medium-sized institution of only about 6,500 students, and actually a small institution, um, if you look at our graduate population, um, these opportunities that are normally reserved for uh, graduate students and postdoctorate students we're able to provide um, to our undergraduate students. So um, I've known a number of students who have had the opportunity to present their research at international um, research symposiums. And sometimes those students were presenting alongside graduate students or sometimes even alongside professors just because their research became so advanced in the time that they were doing research um, in the laboratories working for those professors. And finally, one of our more unique majors, information technology and web sciences, is really designed for those students who are interested in computer science, but also interested in working with um, individuals, humans, uh, solving their problems. So this major is automatically a dual degree major, kind of half your degree will be in IT computer science area, and the other area can you'll choose from a concentration. So it can be anything from cybersecurity to finance to machine learning to medicine. With the idea, as you enter the workforce, you not only have a background in computer science and ITWS, but you also have a background in the area that you're the company that you're working for is. So if you team up ITWS with a finance concentration, you can work for a financial firm and kind of know how they'll need to utilize um, their software, their programs, their IT infrastructure, to kind of best uh, develop it for those individuals at that particular company. So you'll be able to talk the IT jargon, you'll also be able to talk on um, the finance jargon. I know in a couple of students over the last couple of years who did ITWS with a concentration in the arts, and they're currently working for the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., uh, working on some of their in-person, interactive, new, um, updated um, exhibits in some of their museums, and also working on some of their virtual exhibits um, that are featured online on their um, websites. And probably the best praise for any major, it's been ranked number one as far as best information technology programs um, in the United States. Another great option that we provide for all of our students is called the Co-Terminal Degree Program. So this allows students to spend an extra year on our campus at RPI and get their master's degree. That master's degree can be within your home field of study. So you can go from a bachelor's in biology, stay for an extra year and get your master's in biology, but also our Lally School of Management also provides students with a lot of great opportunities for non-business non -business majors to get their master's degree in business and management, um, or even their uh, fast track MBA during just that one additional year of study. Uh, so for transfer students, uh, many of you are coming in as juniors, so you would spend three years at RPI, um, and at the end of three years, leave with both your bachelor's and your master's degree. Some of the benefits of this program is you don't have to decide right off the bat that you wanna do this program. 
beginning of your senior year, um, you can talk with your academic advisor about it. Generally, as long as your GPA is above a 3.33, some majors above a 3.25, you'd be invited to spend that extra um, semester on our, our extra two semesters on our campus and pursue that master's degree. So it's a short two page streamlined co-terminal degree um, internal application for our currently enrolled students. Another benefit is your financial aid, your scholarship money um, will be extended for the additional year of study. So it's often difficult to find scholarship money to receive a master's degree, um, unless you're lucky enough to work for a company that provides funding for that. So this is just a way to spend an extra two semesters, um, stay at RPI, um, and kind of get that master's degree um, out of the way so you can enter the workforce or graduate school um, to get your PhD um, and just be that more um, strengthened. Um, and uh, it really does increase your um, employment opportunities, um, your average starting salaries, um, and really your ceiling on where you can elevate yourself in the particular field um, that you're entering. As I mentioned a few times before, we really do want students to have a real world working experience, both um, at our campus at RPI, uh, but also gaining co-op and internship experiences uh, with companies throughout the United States and throughout the world. Um, so our Center for Career and Professional Development does a great job at kind of making these links with these companies. Um, in a couple of slides, I'll show you some information about that. Um, but just kind of realize that top-notch Fortune 500 companies are coming to our campus um, to recruit our students, not only for full-time employment, but also for co-op and internship um, opportunities. The difference between a co-op and internship at RPI is really time commitment. A co-op is a full-time working semester away from RPI and connecting that to a summer. Well, an internship, it can be a part-time uh, job opportunity during a fall or spring semester, or most students will do a full-time internship um, during one of their summer, uh, during a couple of their, their, their summer term um, away from RPI at one of these um, individual um, companies. Um, we have found that sometimes it is difficult for students to step away from RPI for a full-time semester. Um, so if you are transferring to RPI after your freshman year, um, you will participate in our summer arts program. Um, the summer arts program requires students to spend the summer semester in between their sophomore and junior year um, at RPI studying. So during the summer semester on campus, you'll be taking your first semester junior year courses and kind of in a smaller environment. They'll just be the 15 to 1600 students who are entering their junior year on campus. So you get a lot more individualized attention from our faculty and staff. In exchange for that summer semester on campus, you'll spend the spring semester of your junior year away from RPI, doing an internship, a co-op, traveling abroad, research, community service, starting a company, whatever you feel will best set you up to kind of meet your goals down the road. Whatever you feel um, the kind of real world world experience that you'll need for your next step in your life, you can work with our ARCH staff and make sure those opportunities um, come to fruition. Um, so every student will kind of have a unique plan. Uh, they'll submit those plans and pro 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 proposals to our ARCH um, center staff, and you'll get approved for that away semester um, at RPI. Again, the ARCH semester is only required um, for students who are transferring in as a sophomore. If you've been two years at a community college or two years at another institution, you'll be transferring in as a junior. Um, you won't be participating in the ARCH um, semester, but you'll still have wonderful opportunities to participate in co-op and internship experiences. As I mentioned, our Center for Career and Professional Development um, does a great job at helping out students um, really right from day one. And I encourage you as a transfer student to make that connection with the Center for Career Professional Development your first week on campus. Uh, they'll help you with their resume. They'll he help you with interviewing skills. They'll help you with co-op and internship um, opportunities. Picture on the slide is one of our two large career fairs, one in the fall, one in the spring. On these days, over 170 companies come to campus recruiting students, not only for full-time employment, but also for uh, co-op and internship um, opportunities. In addition to that, throughout the year, over 500 companies come to campus to recruit our students. Um, so really, um, RPI graduates are really sought after. Many of the uh, recruiters for these companies are actually RPI graduates themselves. They send these folks back to campus recruiting RPI students because they really do want the best and the brightest working for them. So after you receive your degree from RPI, um, we're traditionally ranked in the top 10, top 15, top 20 for average starting salaries among um, US graduates, uh, also mid-career salaries. Our, our students and graduates go off to top medical schools, top graduate schools um, throughout the United States and throughout the world. Um, so they really are set up um, for success. Just take a brief uh, break um, as we transition to kind of student life. I know I focused on a lot about academics. 
Um, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to enter them in the chat box. Myself or Teresa um, will answer them either in the chat box or I'll, I'll answer them um, over audio. Um, but we really do focus on the whole student. Um, we're not just focusing on academics at Rensselaer. We really do want to support you both in and out um, of the classroom. So as an incoming transfer student, you'll have multi-levels uh, support system in place. So our Office of Student Transitions, one of their main focuses is on working with our incoming transfer students. So they run our transfer orientation program. The transfer orientation program really starts the, the summer or the spring kind of before you enroll at Rensselaer. So if you're starting in the fall semester, your kind of in-person orientation session uh, will be the week before classes start um, in August. But the Office of Student Transitions will be reaching out to you and working with you um, throughout the summer. Your advisor will be reaching out to you throughout the summer, kind of making your initial student schedule making sure that you know how to register for your uh, first set of courses. And then you'll have an in-person on-campus transfer orientation, just kind of learning about the nuts and bolts. Um, we do realize that you've attended college before. You've probably gone through orientation sessions before. You know a little bit about how college works, but every college is unique. Every college has different requirements. Every college has different support systems in place. So at transfer orientation, you'll hear from our health office. You'll hear from our Center for Career Professional Development. You'll hear from our mobile computing program. You'll hear from our academic advisors, just so you know that all these levels of support are in there in place to make sure that you transfer successfully, that you transition successfully um, to Rensselaer, whether you're coming from a four-year school, a two-year school, the military, whatever you're coming from, um, you'll be able to have that kind of seamless transition um, into the Rensselaer um, community. So one layer of support will be the Office of Student Transitions who will work with you throughout your time at Rensselaer. You'll also be part of our class dean system. So every class year is assigned a class dean and their staff professional staff members who will follow you. So if you transfer in as a junior, you'll have the same class dean your junior year um, and your senior year. If you transfer in as a sophomore, you'll have the same class dean your sophomore, junior, and senior year. And they're really a point of contact. They'll keep you informed of activities uh, that are taking place in and out of the classroom. They'll make sure that you connect with their center career professional development, other activities that are taking place um, on campus. They'll also are a point of contact if you're having a difficulty. So maybe you're struggling in a particular class, so you don't know where to go to get research opportunities. Whatever your questions might be, um, you can reach out to them and they'll be happy to connect with you over email, in person, over Facebook Messenger, whatever, however you want to connect with them. They're there in place for a little extra um, support both in and out um, of the classroom. Really because of these levels of support, um, our transfer students have GPAs that are actually at or higher than the GPAs of students who have started out of high school right as a freshman and our graduation rates the same they're at or higher than the graduation rates um, of students who are entering um, freshman year out of high school. Um, overall our graduation rates are usually in the 85 percent range uh, which for a technological university is extremely high and we're continually trying to work um, to get to a close to 100 percent as possible with these extra added support layers um, on our campus. Transfer students are required to live on campus their first year. We are a very residential campus. Um, anywhere from 65 to 70 percent of our students live on campus their whole time at Rensselaer. So there's a lot that takes place on campus. A lot of support that takes place on campus, as I mentioned before, a lot of uh, community learning, um, collaborative work assignments that take place on campus. So we really feel it does benefit students at least to, to live one year on campus uh, to kind of get that residential experience um, under their belt. Um, if you're in a unique situation, um, there is a waiver process to the Office of Living and Learning that you can uh, reach out to them. Um, a lot of times they will approve these waivers. They'll just ask for some information on why you're requesting um, this individual waiver. One of the things that Teresa and I really like with working with transfer students is everyone is coming from a unique background. Um, some students might have been in the military, some students might have taken time off, uh, some students might have gone to a community college or they might go to a four-year school and realize it's not the right fit for them. Um, but we, we really focus on it and trying to encourage students to do is participate in our student life activities. Um, it really is what makes a university a residential university. Um, so our student union is rather unique. It's one of the last um, student unions uh, that's really kind of fully student run. So students control an eight to nine million dollar activities budget each year. 
and they're officially sponsoring over 160 different clubs, organizations, organizations and events um, throughout um, the year. So there's music, uh, musical organizations, um, improv comedy um, organizations, um, a cappella singing groups, um, orchestras, bands, um, outdoor adventure club, which goes hiking and kayaking um, for the nice uh, weather months. We have lots of great opportunities for students to connect uh, with community organizations like Habitat for Humanity. So whatever you're interested in, whatever you're interested in, in um, and kind of um, participating in outside the classroom, there probably is an organization for you already available to kind of jump right into. Um, but also we have many students who are interested in areas that we don't may not have a club yet. So you can get seven of your eight friends together, um, sign a petition, and every year two to three, five, six new organizations are officially represented um, and get official funding by our student union. Uh, when I started RPI um, over 10 years ago, I remember the students um, trying to start a skydive club. Um, unfortunately, that, that got the thumbs down just because the insurance premium was going to be too much um, for the university um, or for the organization to afford. Um, but we do have great organizations and, and clubs like our flying club, which is pictured on this slide. Um, so you can actually learn to fly a small aircraft at one of our local, local county um, airports. As I mentioned before, we're a diverse campus. We have students from all 50 states, over 60 countries, um, students with all different backgrounds, beliefs. Um, so another part of our campus is really celebrating the diversity um, on our campus. There's academic support programs, um, student-run religious and multicultural clubs and organizations um, from kind of every sort of background that you can imagine on campus. And these clubs are open up to all of our students um, throughout campus, faculty and staff um, participate on campus. So it really is a, a campus and a community that really does um, support diversity of all kinds. Um, throughout my 10 plus years, um, I've gotten to meet students from all over the world, all of the United States, different backgrounds, different beliefs, and that really makes what studying um, at a university at RPI um, really special. We also have a great athletics um, department on campus. About 70% of our students participate in some sort of formalized athletic competition. We have 23 varsity sports. All of them are at the Division III level with the exception of men's and women's ice hockey, which compete at the division one level. So uh, again, some of those larger schools. So universities like Yale, Brown, Cornell, uh, Harvard, or in our ice hockey the, uh, league, the ECAC. And then our division three sports compete um, in the Liberty League. Um, so universities like University um, of Skinmore, Union College, Clarkson, RIT, or some of our uh, athletic divisions, uh, Hamilton, Colgate. Um, so just really providing some great competition um, for our, our varsity athletes. In addition to our varsity sports, we also have about 30 uh, club sports. So things like wrestling, crew volleyball, still competing against other colleges and universities, just not at the varsity level. And then we also have about 20 intramural sports. So RPI student versus RPI student, everything from soccer, basketball, ultimate frisbee, dodgeball tournaments, we even have ice hockey at the club level. Um, nice thing about the club level, several of the sports are offered at the A, B, C, and D level. So A, you have some experience playing before in your life, all the way down to D levels. Maybe you've never seen the equipment before in your life. You just want to go give that a try. So as you can imagine, D level ice hockey is one of the more entertaining sports to go watch um, just because a lot of people have never ice skated before. Half the time they're worried about getting up on their skates and the other half they're actually worried about the stick, the puck and actually trying to score on um, the goal. Uh, we have several workout facilities on our campus. Um, East Campus Athletic Village is not just um, reserved for varsity athletes. Uh, many of our students uh, work out, play basketball there. We have a Mueller Center and Armory on campus um, with workout machine, uh, free weights, um, ellipticals, treadmills, dance studio spaces, uh, classroom spaces for nutrition classes. Um, there's lots of places to run if you just want to go run to clear your head. Uh, clear your head. We really do encourage students to not only uh, stay in shape mentally, uh, but also physically um, as well. So that's kind of a quick uh, 47 minute overview um, on kind of academic student life at Rensselaer. We'll now kind of uh, tr uh, transition or segue into our application process. Um, as I said before, some of you have already applied and gone through this process and we'll get into what takes place after the application process as well. But all, for all of you who's looking to apply, we do accept the common application, the coalition application. Um, either one of those can be used to apply to RPI uh, as a transfer student. Uh, we do offer a uh, rolling admission um, for transfer students, which is very different than our application deadlines for our freshman year applications. So if you're applying and thinking about applying for this fall or any fall, the application deadline is June 1st. Um, so there still is a couple of weeks if you're interested in starting in fall 2020 to get your application in. 
Uh, if you're interested in next spring, the application deadline will be November 1st. And those applications usually go live, um, usually in the summer around August um, 1st. For students who are interested in studying architecture, that's a kind of a one unique program or a Bachelor of Architecture degree, does require students to start in the summer. So that application is due um, March 1st. Once we start reviewing applications, we post decisions every week. So as soon as your application becomes complete, um, we'll review it. Uh, the admissions commission, committee will review it and we'll post that decision as soon as possible. So for this fall, we started posting decisions in mid-March and we'll continue to post those decisions throughout um, this month, June, July, and sometimes even into August, we'll post um, some of those um, admissions decisions. But we will try and inform you as soon as possible once your application is complete. Now, if you apply January 1st or you apply June 1st, in most cases, your decision will be exactly the same. One of the nice things about our transfer admissions process is we don't have any caps on, on any of our majors. So we're really looking for students who can be successful in the classroom. And in most cases, we're able to accept those students. When we're reviewing uh, freshman applications, we have limited space available on campus. We have limited space in our residential halls. We have limited space in our Calculus 1, Calculus 2 courses. Uh, because you've already taken most of these courses at a time, uh, we don't have as many uh, restrictions when we are reviewing applications. So in general, we do look for students with a 3.0 or better GPA in classes um, that will kind of transfer into your major. So if you are looking uh, to transfer in our School of Engineering or School of Science, we're gonna look more closely at your science and engineering um, coursework. If you're looking to transfer into our business school, we're gonna look more closely at your business courses, but we are looking at all of your courses as a whole, because to be successful at Rensselaer, you do need to have that well-roundedness um, in those areas outside um, your, your intended uh, major. Um, there's not specific strict requirements for any of our majors. Um, in general, students do have to have at least pre-calculus on the math side of things. For transfer students, we really do encourage them to have at least one or two semesters of calculus under their belt. Um, also, we look for students who have physics, chemistry, and biology background, either in college or high school. Um, and again, if you are applying for engineering or science, we would encourage you to have at least one or two semesters of a calculus-based physics uh, program under your belt. We do understand that students are sometimes transferring because they are looking to switch majors, and we do value unique backgrounds. So if you are a music major in another school and you're looking to transfer into our, our School of Engineering as an electrical engineering major, we realize that you may not have all those uh, engineering courses under your belt, but we still will look for that solid math and science foundation to show that you can be successful at Rensselaer. So when we are reviewing applications, your transcript's gonna be mo your most important um, part of that application puzzle. Um, your transcripts, um, we need official copy of that college transcript from all colleges and universities. Um, this semester due to COVID-19, we, we have made an exception. So if you still do need to submit transcripts, we are able to accept unofficial transcripts, uh, mail, uh, email to transfer at rpi.edu. Uh, that's transfer at rpi.edu. Um, so for this semester, we are making that exception and are accepting unofficial transcripts. In addition to the transcripts, we'll also require at least one letter of recommendation. Uh, we encourage it to be uh, written by a professor or an advisor at your current institution. If that's not possible, um, you can certainly reach out to us and we can approve other types of letters of recommendation, uh, particularly if you're serving in the military at the current point um, or you've taken a break um, from college for a year or two or 10 years or 25 years. Um, we realize you may not have that connection with a faculty member or advisor. Um, so we are willing to make exceptions um, to accept letters from supervisors or bosses or companies that you might have come into contact um, or worked with before. Uh, the essay for transfer students is optional, but we do recommend that you complete an essay. It doesn't have to be a lengthy essay. We're just trying to learn from you while you're looking to transfer, what has attracted you um, to Rensselaer, why are you applying to Rensselaer? So that can easily be answered in a paragraph or two submitted with your application. If you're applying with less than four full-time semesters, so you think you're gonna enter as a freshman or a sophomore transfer student, we do require your high school transcript and any available testing that you've taken, SAT, ACT. Um, although a majority of the decision will be based upon your college performance, uh, we still do wanna take a look at your high school transcript um, and your SAT, ACT. Um, if you're interested in how your credits will transfer, we do have a transfer credit database online. Uh, you can go to go.rpi. 
www.edu slash credit guide. Um, that lists all the courses that have been approved for transfer over the last couple of years. Um, if your school is not listed in that guide or there's certain courses not listed in that guide, it doesn't mean that those courses will not transfer. It just means that those courses have not been reviewed over the last couple of years uh, by our faculty and staff for approval. Once you are accepted, or even before you're accepted, uh, we do ask you to submit uh, course descriptions from the courses that you've taken. If you're attending a university or college that we receive a lot of transfer students from, um, you don't necessarily have to submit those course um, descriptions. Uh, but if you're attending a university, you go to the credit guide, you notice that not many of the courses you've taken have been reviewed. We would ask you just to go to your online catalog, copy and paste those into a Word document, and either upload them into your application status portal, or you can email them to transfer at rpi.edu. Once you do apply, you will receive, and once we process your application, you will receive an email from us with a username and password to log on to our application status check website. It'll list all the requirements there um, as far as what's required of your application, your transcript, your test scores, your letter of recommendation. You'll see green checks or red X's, depending if we have that item or not. So you can follow live um, on, on a daily basis. You can check that site um, if you'd like. But also on that site, that's a place that you'll receive your admissions decision. So once you uh, once we make a decision, we'll post on that site. Your financial aid information will also be posted on that site. So we really do encourage students to check out their application status portal because there's a lot of great links and information um, on that website. In addition, you can also upload documents. You can upload your course descriptions. You can upload um, your resume, um, other some other information on there as well. So once you are accepted, we have these course descriptions. We provide that information to our faculty and they award credit for any similar courses with a grade of C minus or better. Obviously, every university teaches courses a little bit differently. One of the things that we teach differently at RPI is our math courses. Um, our math courses are broken down um, into different semesters. A lot of uh, universities or colleges teach calculus over three or four semesters. We kind of jam pack our calculus work into two semesters. So sometimes you might take three semesters of calculus at another college and you might only receive uh, credit for our calculus one and calculus two. We just wanna make sure that all the uh, topics covered in those courses um, you've been exposed to. Um, so when you're moving on to your math courses, your physics courses, um, your engineering uh, courses, your architecture courses, you do have that background information um, so you can be set up for success. Once we've gathered all the information from our faculty, our staff will put together a credit evaluation work a credit evaluation worksheet. On the left hand side, we'll list all the courses at your prior university. On the right hand side, I'll list how those courses transfer to Rensselaer, and they'll also provide you with a degree works um, worksheet. Several, many colleges have degree works, but it's basically a degree completion worksheet. So it'll show you the kind of percent of your degree that is complete, um, how many additional courses that you need to take. At that point, once you have your credit value work, evaluation worksheet, once you have your degree works, um, that information will be emailed to you. It won't be on the portal. It'll be actually emailed to you as attachments. Once you have that information, if you do have any uh, questions about why particular courses transferred or you want to meet with, uh, talk to an advisor to see um, how many more semesters that you'll need to take um, to finish your um, graduation um, uh, requirements at RPI, just reach out to us. Um, just email transfer at rpi.edu and we can uh, set you up to meet with an advisor. Um, if it's not COVID-19 at that point, um, hopefully you'll be able to come to campus if you're in the local area. But over the next couple of months, I uh, will set up uh, meetings with you, either email or um, other, uh, other ways of kind of virtually meeting um, with those um, folks. And then also another opportunity to get questions answered about your credit evaluations at Transfer Orientation. Um, so at Transfer Orientation, our credit evaluators will be there in person. You'll get to meet with them face to face. If you do have any questions about um, why a particular course um, transferred, why it didn't transfer, um, sometimes they'll ask for some additional information and a lot of times they'll award additional credit. We try to be as flexible as possible our, our, our orientation, our credit evaluators I want to work with you. Um, they realize that you want to graduate as quickly as possible. They just don't want to prove any credit that will set you up for failure. They want to make sure that you have all the information so you pr progress through your time at RPI. You are set up um, for success. Um, obviously, um, with COVID-19 going on, there's a lot of question marks out there. Out there. 
at this time. Um, I know it's one of the questions in the chat box. We are still planning um, to have classes taught on our campus um, in the fall semester. Um, we're still planning to have our transfer orientation um, uh, on campus in person um, during uh, the summer, at the end of summer, at the end of August. Um, so we're keeping our fingers crossed. We're uh, updating uh, daily. Uh, we have meetings daily about these um, topics. Um, we are planning for every scenario process uh, possible. Um, if we're not able to have uh, courses on campus, um, we are having um, great development uh, with virtual online courses that will be available um, for the fall semester. Um, we promise that we'll keep you updated. Um, so if you are an incoming student, um, we will um, update with you information um, as soon um, as we receive it and as soon as decisions um, are made. On the financial aid side of things, we really wanna to try to make attending RPI as affordable as possible. 100% um, of domestic students receive some form of financial assistance from Rensselaer. Most of that is coming from merit-based scholarships. So as an incoming transfer student, just like an incoming freshman, you're packaged in this uh, very similar way. Um, all incoming transfer students are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships. So there's no additional scholarship forms to fill out. Um, you're automatically considered based upon what you bring to the table, your grades, your activities, your extracurricular activities, your leadership um, that you've demonstrated during your time in college um, and in some cases um, and in high school. If you're interested in need-based aid, we are a little bit different than a lot of schools. Um, we do require the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid, which you and your parents or guardians have probably filled out before for the current institution that you're attending. As a private institution, we also require another form called the CSS profile, which is a college board financial aid form that more and more private institutions are requiring. It just provides us with a more in-depth look at what you're able to afford um, financially. So oftentimes our Office of Financial Aid will wait until they receive the FAFSA and CSS profile to put together your full financial aid package, which will include the merit-based scholarships and also any need-based aid um, that you qualify for. Once that is prepared, um, they will post it to your application status portal. Um, so you'll get an emailing, email saying that you do have an update and then you can go check out your financial aid package. If you do have any questions about the financial aid package, you can email the Office of Financial Aid at finaid, F-I-N-A-I-D, at rpi.edu. Um, obviously, it's a really busy time for the Office of Financial Aid. Um, we have students who have been accepted as freshmen. We have students who have been accepted uh, as undergraduate transfers. We have students who have been accepted as graduate students. Um, with the COVID-19 situation, we have lots of students who are current students who are facing financial difficulties. So they're trying to get through their emails. They're trying to respond to as quick as possible. But it might take them a little bit longer uh, to kind of get um, back to you at this point. Um, in your acceptance letter, you will have an enrollment deadline date. Um, so it'll say we ask you that you pay your enrollment by May 15th or by June 1st. We give you approximately six weeks from when you are accepted to kind of make the decision if you do want to attend Rensselaer. If anything is getting held up, your financial aid, your credit evaluation for whatever reason, you need some additional time, just send us an email. In most cases, we are able to accept.